Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Who's that guy next to you? Hell, I don't know. Next on Men Are So Smart. And welcome to a very special, special episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And that gentleman that is sitting between us is a very dear friend of mine that I've known for, I don't know, 25 years. Uh, you know him from KFBK 1530 News Talk Radio here in Sacramento and around the world. And he is not only the evening guy, but he's also the sports guy. Yeah. Pat Walsh. Yes, sir. Big Lou. How are you, buddy? Good to see you, dude. My partner. Corvette. Yes. How you doing, man? How'd you get past my security? <laughs> <laughs> One of the beautiful things about having a show like this is there aren't any rules. And we can have on anybody that we want and talk about anything that we want. And so Ronnie and I were putting uh, our heads together and trying to come up with a couple of names that we wanted to share with you. And the guy that... <laughs> just popped up that was number one on my list was this guy right here, Pat Thank Walsh. Thank you, man. Thank you, Lou. Uh, Pat, let's get started here. What brings you to this point in your life, professionally, personally? Tell us. You mean um, sitting in your stinky garage on yes, a Saturday? Yes, exactly. Well, you asked me to come over and sit in your stinky garage on a Saturday. Okay. That's what brings me here All right. in my life to this point. All right, so. It kind of sucks right now. Yeah, man. listen, I've reached bottom. <laughs> I'm scraping. I'm sorry. I, no, it's okay. Grass. It's your garage, not I mine. Oh, is it your garage? <laughs> I apologize then. Oh, mine you can pick on, but his is the problem. Okay, I got it. All right, Pat, so what brings you to being the evening guy at News Talk 1530 KFPK? Um, many years of uh, trying to convince people that, hey, you know, I've got a different idea for uh, an, a talk show. You know, all I heard was, you know, you go up and down the dial, you hear sports or your politics. I said, man, there's got to be something else. Then you had, of course, you had your Howard Stearns, which was, you know, I respect Howard. That was, but, but, you know, a little racy, a little different. And I was looking for something where um, you could talk about anything, uh, have fun, you know, incorporate some good bumper music and just, you know, and relate to people. And it fell on deaf ears forever until Ken Charles one day pulled me in and said, hey, man, I understand you want to do a show. Yeah. He says, I think you might have something there. And next thing you know, he says, you know, it could happen in September or October. And sure enough, he followed up on that in, uh, in October of 20, God, 2013 now. Um, yeah, I got my show. Been doing almost five years. We go back in radio to the O.J. Simpson trial. Yes. When it was broadcast on Talk 650 here in Sacramento. And at, even at that time, Pat, when you and I first became fast friends, you told me about this idea for a show that you wanted Did to I? do. Did I? Yeah. I've been seeing it for years. Now, you may or may not remember, <laughs> there used to be a guy on the radio here in Sacramento that was somewhat controversial. His name was Jeff Katz. Yeah. You produced his show. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from him? From Jeff, the main thing I learned from Jeff was, in fact, he was a big influence because we became friends but what he could do masterfully was weave important topics with humor and could do it seamlessly. One second you would be hearing a, uh, a serious story or a ser having a serious discussion with the guy, the next, but he could incorporate humor into it and make you laugh. And I, and I realized, you know, that's the thing. I always felt like if you could make someone actually laugh and they hear you on the radio, they're laughing. They'll tune in again and see if you can do it again. If you can do it again, then they're hooked. And Jeff had a way of doing that. So uh, that's what I try to incorporate in my show. You know, we get to some serious stuff, but we're trying to have some fun, be entertaining, and, and leave some of the funny stuff in it, too. Yeah. Which would you prefer, fame or fortune? Fame or fortune? Whoa. Fame or fortune? Well, that's a good one. Uh, maybe I would say fame only in that if I could, if you retain the fame, then you're going to have hear more ears will be listening to your voice. And right now, uh, I don't know, I think there needs to be somewhat of a positive voice out there, and I try to be a positive voice. So, and then you can have an effect on more, a bigger audience. Yeah, I think uh, fame lasts a lot longer than fortune does. I can scrape by, but if you can get a message out there, then exactly. you know, 
yeah. who knows if it's doing any good at all, but, you know. So, in Sacramento, uh, a lot of our viewers may remember there was a story not too long ago about a road rage incident. Oh, God. Yeah. Tell us about that. <sighs> that. First of all, that's a story that I hear over and over, and people always ask, and I try to put that behind me. Exactly what happened is I'm driving up Highway 80 going to my home, up in the foothills, past Auburn, going towards Colfax. And if you're up in that area, the truckers are going uphill, going headed towards Reno. They're in the right lane, and a lot of them struggle to get up the hill. I'm moseying along, having a cigar, minding my own business, and I realize that there's two trucks lined up. The one in front is going slow, but one behind it has got his blinker on and has forever. It's trying to get to the middle lane to pass the other truck to get up the hill. And people aren't letting him. Um, so I decide, as the further we get up the hill, there's less traffic. So I decide, well, let me go ahead and pull into the middle. And I'll sit here so this truck can get ahead. So I'm no traffic will interrupt. He can get ahead and get this other truck. So we did. Gives me the courtesy lights and everything, waves. Fantastic. Hey, you know, it's at that moment, right? You're trying to do something good in traffic. You're feeling kind of good about yourself. Like, hey, I was showing a little courtesy there. And then the next thing I know, here's this guy with two other guys in this vehicle, and they're pulling a, like a, a trailer, look like landscape crew or something. And each one of them is leaning out the window, flipping me off. I'm like, what the? Heck? You know, I had no idea. I had no idea because I had clearly checked the roads. There was no one around me. Anyhow. Like, okay, so I try to go. Well, then they swerve into my car and they're yelling at me and they're trying to, you know, they're trying to struggle. So I decide, what am I going to do? So I'm getting up to a point now where there's not a lot of businesses because you're up in the foothills. So I put the pedal to the metal, feel I just ditch them, get my exit. Well, they weren't going to have that. They were on my tail and I didn't want to go 100 miles an hour. So in thinking, what am I supposed to do? I'm not thinking I should call 911. They haven't really done anything yet. I can get away. But as further I go, where can I, what, what are my opportunities? So I get this idea that if I get off on my exit, there's a gas station there. It's the middle of the day, pull over to the gas station, get out of my trunk and say, excuse me, to the customers or whomever, or to the guy working at the gas station, guy or gal, these guys are harassing me, they've been following me, and I just need a witness to see what's going on. So nothing happens. Well, so I pull off the exit, and there's a truck driver sitting on the exit, standing by his truck. He's got his truck parked. It's like, whoa, perfect. Pull right over to him. And I get out of my truck and I said, excuse me, sir. I want you to see these guys here. They've, now these guys have blocked me in off the exit with their trailer and their vehicle. They've got me blocked in. Mm -hmm. They get out, they're coming towards me. I jump out and I tell a guy, please watch this. These guys are threatening me. <clears throat> and now they've pulled over and you can see they're gonna be trapped in here. He's like, I got it, I'm, I'm watching. So it turns out it's a dad and his son and his son's friend. And they surround me. And I'm saying, look, man, you can't threaten me. You can't do this. Long story short, he says, that's it, boys. Let's take him out. And they attack me on the side of the road. Went down a hill. Truck driver grabs a two-by-four, comes down the hill to save me. People are, people are calling police. Oh I come back up. My face is bloody. My head split open. I went down an embankment. And they took off. And that's what happened. That was it. Mm. Well, there was enough info out there, though, to, to catch them, if I remember right, though. They oh, found, no, they caught they them and they got away with people. it. No, they got away with it. We went to court. Holy cow. I don't know what the reasoning was, but um, I, in, if I were going <clears> to <throat> guess, and if there was any lesson learned from this, and again, it was a jury, I guess, that were, or I believe it was a jury that was determining the outcome of this, you know, I think they probably said, well, the guy got out of his truck. Oh, you. Me. When the only reason I got out of my truck, again, was to say, look, man, please watch this. Yeah. To be in a public place. I mean, I wasn't going to allow this this dad. It was clearly outraged for whatever. I don't even know what I did. He never explained it. I didn't want him coming up to my window mm -hmm. or approaching my cab. We're now, now inside my cab, and I don't know what he's got in his, yeah, you're in his you know. So, anyhow, that's the road rage. So, how was it working with Al Pacino? What? <laughs> well, that's the question I have right here. <laughs> how was it working with Al Pacino, Pat? <laughs> well, he always brought bagels. 
<laughs> bagels and coffee. He's good about was, that. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. It's a good yeah. time. I'm sure it was. <laughs> That's what I remember uh, working with Al too. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pat, tell us the story behind your first car. <laughs> My first car. Yeah. We're both car guys. Oh, yeah. Man. Okay. My first car. Um. My first car was a 1967 Plymouth Fury 3 with, I believe, a 383. 383? I know, I know that vehicle. You know that one? Yeah. It was actually my mother's car. Okay. And then my mother got a 67 uh, Cadillac. Nice. And somehow I ended up with, see, we upgraded from a, you know, 67. Yeah. 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 And so I ended up with the Plymouth. And uh, uh, I realized that. Man, that gas pedal from here to the floor, it was a long way. Yeah. And man, it really, really went really fast. Yes. And it was yeah. blue. And it was I love that car. That's what that was my first car. And now you have a Ford pickup truck, an old one, don't you? Do you still have it? 54 Ford F one hundred, yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, that's what you had. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? You got a fifty four? Yeah. Where is it? I don't know. Is that right? What? I don't know. Okay. You know, it's years so ago. religious to it, though. Al Pacino has it. Could you tell Al I'd like it back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got pulled. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's the dumbest way you've ever been injured? Oh, easy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Uh, 12 years old, mm -hmm. 1972. My mom's boyfriends were at his house over off Meadowview Road, Uncle Milty. Milty. Yeah, Uncle Milty. He'd, he'd go to sleep and his dentures would come out. Yeah. <laughs> we, called him, <laughs> we called him Uncle Milty. <laughs> so my brothers and I were over there visiting uh, with my mom, Uncle Milty, and Uncle Milty had to air condition his house. In the summer, he didn't turn the air on because he was cheap. So he had like this motor, I don't know how, what kind of rig it was, but it had like, it was like a car engine fan. <laughs> uh, honest to God, it was like a car engine fan with big blades, big <laughs> blades. And it was sitting on a post thing, some kind of a thing, and it would blow through his kitchen window. <laughs> like a, just the biggest stream of air, because it was a giant motor. Nice. And I got mad at my brother one day. Ah, uh, and in a brilliant move, I'm looking around the house with my brother Steve, what, where I'm going to find him. And here's the thing going a million miles an hour, and I look through the window like this, uh -huh. and a motor, the blades hit me like this, hit my chin, oh, tear out my neck, rip out the bone of my chin, and blood's going like this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, the, up the wall, up the, the covering, the, the patio covering, my mom about faints. So, um... Yeah, I remember going into wow. the hospital, in the Mercy Hospital, and the doctor going, you know, young man, one more inch there. Yeah. As you lean your head over one more inch, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Right now. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, that was my dumbest injury right there. Dang. I What's your... that, that's not Cal OSHA approved, though, is it? No. That, uh, that motors? You probably had a no. permit. No. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, probably had a permit. Yeah. All right, Pat, what's your most memorable moment with cheese? <laughs> wow! <laughs> These are probing questions. It's right here uh, on the screen. I got If it's on the screen, I got to ask. Right? <laughs> when Al Pacino brought the cheese to the set. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We shared some gouda. He's such a giver. <laughs> well. All right. Who would play you in a movie about Jason your life? Jason Statham. Okay. Oh. Oh, going straight for the big guns. Before I even ask the question. <laughs> wow. Jason Stank. He's, he's thought about this. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. I always got the whiskers and I got the zip down head. Oh, you do? And I got, and all the time I hear that. Oh, right. you know, you remind me of him. So, and I like the guy. He's the one that influenced me to zip down the head. Him and, and of course, God, who took a few strands away. I get that a lot, but it's always Mr. Bean. I remind somebody of Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it. <laughs> all right. You can press a button that'll make any one person explode. <laughs> Who would you blow up? Kim Jong-un. Oh, boy. Yeah, give me that button. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'd be on board with that oh, one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be, yeah, that's an easy choice for me. All right. Although Charles Ng is in there in the mix as well, oh, I think. Yeah. He'd be right there at the top. Okay. You were married for a while. Yes. <laughs> the good old days. Yes. It wasn't very long, as I recall. 
You have a good memory. Yeah. Uh, how was that? What happened? What can you tell us? This is a show for men. Right. So here you go. What, again, it just depends on how much of a story you want. But uh, essentially, um, I'm sitting in my house one night. I'm getting ready to go to spring training. No one knows except my work and me and my parents because my parents live in Arizona. So I'm going to go to spring training in Arizona. Phone rings, sitting there, watch TV. And I get this guy who's yelling at me saying, why don't you bleep and go to Arizona? You bleep and bleep and bleep and never come back. You bleep, bleep and threatening me. Click, hangs up the phone. I'm in my living room going, okay, who? Wow. Right? My dad, it's not my work. Who is calling me and is threatening me like this and knows I'm going to Arizona for spring training? So back in those days, and I don't even know if you can still do it, Star 69. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I forgot all about back, that. yeah. Go to Star 69. Turns out this guy who, unfortunately, and my, my ex regressed this very much, uh, that she was cheating with was in her apartment, and he was a recently released felon from prison. Oh, a violent felon who was choking her in her apartment and telling her, you either call your husband and tell him, or I'm going to call him and tell him. Uh, so he did. And, yeah, that's wow. That's what happened. Yeah. Probably a good rule of thumb not to date recently released felons. Yeah. I try to follow that rule of thumb. It's a good Yeah. <laughs> there was that one Makes guy, sense. though. Well, Okay. Present yeah. company excluded. Hey! <laughs> Pat, I, you know, I got to be honest. If I didn't ask this question, I'd, I'd be remorsed. Um, can you describe your most frustrating experience with plastic wrap? With plastic wrap? <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Almost every experience. That is a deep good. That uh, <laughs> makes me think. Uh, and I'm still thinking now. Yeah. Okay, well. My, my deepest experience? No. Um, your most sorry. frustrating. <laughs> frustrating. Yes. Because, you know, it's. <laughs> How about when you have leftover pizza, the square is. The plastic wrap is square, but the pizza is triangular. Yeah. Well. How do you well, what do you do? You get the plastic wrap, right? And, you know, guys know this. You get the plastic wrap, and it's got the zip thing where you're supposed to be able to rip it straight. Yes. But it doesn't rip straight. No, it doesn't. No, no you rip, you start yes. the pull, right. and it starts to rip. I mean, just, you know, cleanly. Next thing you know, you're just pulling it, and it's stretching, and it's a big stretched out thing of plastic wrap. Yeah. I think that's on the manufacturers. <laughs> yeah, that's not on, that's not a man thing. That's, that's really it unpleasant. Is. It is unpleasant. Yeah. <laughs> Better it really is. Do it. Yeah. So you went to Chico State. Yes. Go Wildcats. Okay. Uh, were you in a fraternity? No. Okay. I was going to let this guy spank my ass. Do you? <laughs> I don't think you folks could have heard that comment. No. <laughs> Maybe we should have put him closer to the camera. Uh, you know Aaron Rodgers? Yes. Tell us about him. Great guy. Proud to be from Chico. Went to Pleasant Valley High School. He is um, just a very down-to-earth, caring guy. Does a lot for his community. Uh, I... I had the honor of being inducted as into the Butte College Hall of Fame in 2004, I think, with Larry Allen and the Dallas Cowboys. Um, and then in, I can't remember what year it was, but when Aaron Rodgers went to Butte College, he was inducted as a Hall of Fame student at Butte College. I got to, you know, I, I introduced him and hung out with him and uh, just a great guy, you know, real humble. And this guy's one of the top athletes you can name, and he's just down to earth and very appreciative of his, of his roots. You know, you see him on an interview now, he'll wear a Butte College hat or oh, nice. a you know, sweatshirt or something like that, or even Pleasant <clears throat> Valley High School and stuff like that. So I really admire that guy. How much better would the 49ers be if they had Oh, come him? on! Can you imagine? What's his name? Scott McClellan? Are you an Niner fan? Oh, big. Okay, see. Huge. And I still came on this show. <laughs> he ran I told down. Ronnie not no. to talk about that. <laughs> no, what a mistake! You, I mean, no disrespect to Alex Smith. How many draft the picks guy have they sitting wasted? in your backyard at Cal, and you yeah. go for Alex Smith? Yeah. As a Ram fan, thank you, Scott McLuhan. <laughs> right. Yeah. And and uh, was it uh, Nolan was your coach, Dick Nolan? Uh, right. Uh, Mike Nolan. Mike Nolan. Mike, Mike Nolan. Nolan. Dick's yes. son. Yes. I mean, they've wasted so many draft picks on quarterbacks since then, no. and trades, and everything. Ugh. Nothing has worked out. And he's been as steady as steady can be in that position for 
years. Yeah, no, nah, he's... They would have been... Oh, you would have had a couple more Super Bowls, yeah. I believe. Yeah. If you had Aaron Rodgers. All right, sports guy Pat Walsh. Top three quarterbacks all time. Kurt Warner. One. Well, one of my favorites, of course, is Roman Gabriel. But I'm not saying he's one of the top three, but he's my favorite. I mean, you got to go with Tom Brady. I mean, how do you not? And you got to go with Joe Montana. There, I was waiting for that. Even as a Rams fan, you got to recognize greatness. As long as 49er fans recognize Kurt. Three years in a row, 500-plus points. No other team's ever done that. Yeah. Marshall Joe, Falk, though, was... Yeah, oh, he was marginal. Yeah, uh, because I was playing fantasy football all the time. And if you had the first pick and you got Marshall Falk, you're just you're winning the season. doesn't matter. Yeah. You have Marshall Falk, you're winning. Yeah, that's right. Oh. So, <laughs> fantastic to watch. Yeah. Loved <laughs> Yeah, that was that was the ma most amazing teams they ever had. Was yeah, Kurt and Marshall and Isaac Miles. and Tory. Yeah, yeah. God, what the Patriots were... really taking in the shorts this year, though. Huh? No, well, they know. did this. They I, did I this think week. They're, they're quite the team that they were last year. Well, they got know. roughed up by the Dolphins this week. They can get beat. They can definitely be beat. But they're a good team. And Brady did not look good at all. Until someone unseats those guys, right? They're still the best. Even though, I, as it pains me to say that, I know. But. I know. Jeez, you're 40 years old. You look like you're never going to quit playing and like your team's never going to quit winning. It's right. quite an amazing. Yeah. I mean, we all wish it was our team. And, you know, one entire um, career with one coach. Yeah, yeah, that helps. Well, you know, probably the most amazing thing about them, though, is they lose a piece. They have somebody that does amazing. They lose them. They put somebody in his spot, and they go on, and they never miss a beat. Yeah, right. They are they're a machine. And they just replace a cog with a different cog, and it's like business as usual. It's amazing. You look at some of these guys, Burkhead, or then you had Danny Woodhead. Yep. You, just, you know, I, I, as soon as, you know, being a Ram fan, Amadola playing for the Rams, that was the best guy they had. He was right. a tremendous receiver. Right. As soon as he uh, is on the open market, of course you know Bill Belichick's going to snatch that guy up, and he's yep. been fantastic. He fit right in. So yeah. they, get, they get these really smart sure-handed guys and uh, they just play within the system you recently traveled to europe yes tell us about that and tell us about what you have coming up oh man i'm glad you asked that was like that everyone would tell me anyone that had experienced anything like this oh it's gonna be a life-changing experience me i had never experienced going overseas or doing any of that i didn't know what they meant now i know what they mean i mean uh, we went to France and, <clears throat> and uh, went with conservative tours. Ken Chase is amazing, this guy that runs us conservative tours. The guy's just so knowledgeable. But s just seeing Paris, seeing a different perspective and realizing, man, you know, I live on that much of a piece of land in this gigantic earth. And, I, and you, it takes that, really, it took that for me to really give me that perspective. And see that, you know what, uh, people have a different way of living. Uh, we, we went to the uh, beaches at Normandy, all of the D-Day beaches. Uh, we got to see uh, the, the room where the Nazis surrendered, which is left exactly how it was that day. I learned about, uh, you know, hedgehogs. I learned about mulberries. I learned about, you know, all these incredible things that I really wasn't aware of. And then you go over there and, you know... Um, Private steel hanging from the steeple. I don't know. Do you, do you, I mean, I don't know if people know these stories, but you go over there and you, wow, here's this guy. He's a paratrooper. He's an American paratrooper, and he's going to land in this town, and it's occupied by Nazis. Now he gets guys off course, and when you go over there, they got these medieval churches, man. They are incredible, and they all have these pinnacles, these peaks on them. Um, and, and here's this guy coming down to this church and realizing, well, I'm either going to land in this town, which is occupied by Nazis, or I'm hitting this church. Either way, not good. Yeah. See, he private steals coming down. What happens is his parachute gets caught on one of the pinnacles of the church. Now the guy's hanging on the side of the building oh, boy. on the side of this church with the Nazis looking up, like, you know. And so <clears throat> and they eventually got him down. And the luckiest man in the world, and then in a couple of days after that, or a few days after that, the war ends, so we have to turn this guy over. Oh. And so you're looking at the luckiest guy in the world. And then we hear about a guy, um, 
uh, named um, Yosef the Bitch. Yosef the Bitch, a story I'd never heard, where this guy was a Nazi, but he was, uh, uh, he's in one of these little towns um, in Normandy, and um, one of the areas over there, and he's just wreaking havoc, and he's murdering people, just a vicious human being. Well, when the Americans, the Allies come into there, and they're taking out the Nazis, when they got to Yosef the Bitch, they took him out, the entire town jumps out and starts celebrating and dancing, and they don't know why, <laughs> and then they're trying to relate to him that this is Yosef the Bitch, and this is the crimes that he's committed against humanity there, uh -huh. and so it was like a big, joyous occasion. Um, so it was just stories like that, and realizing, wow, to storm those beaches, man, to go to Point the Hawk, to see the English Channel, to see the craters where they bombed, it is amazing. It, it, it's just so, you can still feel it there. It may have been decades ago, but this is one of the most important pieces of land in the world in terms of our freedom and liberty. And it was life-changing. In in and, and, and in Paris, I realized people don't sit on their phones. You know, people for the most part seeming, seem to be in, in shape. They don't see a lot of heavy people because it's the way they eat. I, my, the way I eat has now changed since I've come back. They dress nice. They try to look nice. It was just an a eye-opening experience. And now in April, I'm going to learn some more because we're going to go to Italy with conservative tours. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to that. Seeing how, how can people get more information? Conservativetours.com. Ken Chase is an incredible, like I said, an incredible guy. The guy's so knowledgeable. And what the great thing is uh, on this, I, it is you know you pay for this trip you go over the guy teach you, everything's taken care of your uh, your your transportation's taken care of all the logistics you know, the food the wine the hotels uh, your airfare everything uh, and, and so it's you can go to conservativetours.com okay. what are the what are the security concerns like over there do they mention that at all when you're on the the tour yeah, I mean, same thing as you would see over here. Because France has certainly had its share yeah. of issues, and as as with any place else in the world. Things I noticed about that, and, and when I got back, you know, while I was gone, two things happened that were very, uh, one very sad, uh, one very tragic while I was on that particular trip. As I landed in Chicago on the way, I, I saw that Tom Petty had died, which I love Tom Petty. I'm oh, sad about that. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, when I got to France, I realized that the shooting had happened in Las Vegas. So here's this, you got this coward shooting out of a window because his life's not going well. So he's got to take out innocent civilians who are at a concert. And so then you start thinking about that. But what I noticed was in Paris, uh, you see groups of um, military, you know, uh, police or whatever they may be. You know, they're standing with the fatigues. They have guns at the ready at all times. There's going to be groups of three or four of them. And whether it's on the streets of Paris, whether it's at the Eiffel Tower, you know, you see these guys. And I'm, and I'm thinking, you know, I actually like this. I don't know why it doesn't bother me. But on the, on the flip side, there is a thing of like, wow, we really need these now somehow. And you, and you think about it. So in terms of security, that's one of the things that really made me think about. Like, and, I, and when I came back, I asked that on my radio show. Is that something that you would like to see in the United States? Because think about it. Yeah, it makes you think. Gee, we're, it's got to this point where we have to have these these guys around standing guard. But at the same time, if they were, this guy that was leaning out this window shooting people would have been taken out. Right. He could have saved some lives. So that was just one of the things that... You know, occurred. people may or may not realize, but a lot of national critical infrastructures in, you know, at least in California, already have people at the ready. Uh, Golden Gate Bridge has a security contingent. Folsom Dam has a security contingent. So even though they're more in the background, you know, just knowing they're there probably is a little bit comforting. And because, I mean, wow, Golden Gate Bridge is a, it's, it's not just nationally known, it's internationally right. known. I'm happy to know that. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of, a, I, you know, you kind of hope that right. that's the case. You may not know, but you kind of hope that that's the case. So right. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. All right, we're just about <clears throat> out of time for this particular episode, and we're going to hold you over for a, um, part two. Uh, but I've got time for one more question, so I want to make sure it's a good one. Um, are you are you mocking me? <laughs> Don't freaking mock me, Walsh. Seriously. <laughs> are you satisfied with the shape of your tongue? 
Nah. Nah. Ronnie. No, no. <laughs> no, I like yours. You do? Yeah, I do. Ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll live with it. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Men Are So Smart. What we do here is try to get to the bottom of things, really get to know people by asking the questions people want to know the answers to. So uh, if you'd like inform more information, you'll find it below in our description, all of the ways that you can get to us via email, all of our social media and our blogs, etc. Um, and stay tuned because our next episode, we're going to be playing some games with Pat Walsh, the sports guy. Really? Yes, that's next. Your ball? No, it's more mental. If you've got a ping pong ball in your head, yeah. Uh, that's on the next. Men are so smart.